Cave accidents are situations that take place inside a cave or other underground chambers and can leave those involved hurt or even dead. But that didn't stop a group of professional underwater divers from Norway and Finland to go out and descend into the Plura Cave and ascend to Steinjugel Flag at Dry Cave. However, they were not completely certain what they would encounter, which turned out to be much more complicated than they had anticipated. We will try to delve deeper into the tragic incident of the Plura Cave dive in February 2014 today to understand why and how two divers perished in this dangerous cave. If you're curious enough, we're here to surely satisfy that curiosity. So keep watching as we dive into today's deadly case, because you're watching Deadly Addiction. A pair of divers dug a hole in the ice on the morning of February 6, 2014, and started donning their dry suits and getting ready for their forthcoming long and chilly dive in the snowy hills of central Norway, atop a little alpine pond called Plura. One of the men, Patrick Rinkfist, enthusiastically stated that the water was looking clear that day and that he was no mystery to the depths of the cave passage that the men would be going down into soon as he'd been one of the original explorers of the passage and managed to find his connection to a cave system in the hills about a mile away, the Steinjugel Flagget. Two squads planned to dive together. Two divers made up the first team while three divers made up the second team. Two hours after the first team started, the second squad was expected to start in the water. On that particular day, Patrick had planned to record the entire connecting stretch. Even though it would be Jari Hodorinen's first time diving into the passage, he was a very experienced cave diver. The men prepared their equipment and were eager to go diving. So they radioed their three pals to let them know they were ready to go diving. Patrick Roinkvist and Jari Hodorinen set out on what was supposed to be a long, hard five-hour dive assisted by underwater scooters, and so the men descended into the pond and the depths of the cave. The trio was scheduled to follow them two hours later to give any sediment that the pair may have picked up time to settle. They descended roughly 65 feet into a dark cave system with angular rock walls on the initial part of the journey. After traveling through a lengthy passageway with an air pocket, they abruptly descended into a deep, narrow sump that was more than 442 feet deep at its maximum depth. The dive appeared to be going according to plan about an hour in, and the two were starting to ascend the opposite side of the U-shaped tube into the Steinjugel Flagged Cave. About 360 feet below the surface of Plura where they had started, Patrick observed Jari flashing his light, requesting assistance. Jari got stranded because his equipment was entangled in the line they were following. Jari was in a panic when Patrick instantly stepped in to help. When cave diving, panicking after getting stranded or lost is extremely typical, but this panicking causes you to breathe more quickly and uses up your breathing gas supplies much faster than usual. The men wore a closed system known as a rebreather where the spent gas has the carbon dioxide filtered out and expelled so the leftover gas is combined with more oxygen-rich gas. The diver will immediately feel suffocated as their body naturally responds to the higher concentration of carbon dioxide in their blood when breathing too quickly, since the carbon dioxide cannot be filtered out quickly enough. Panicking never ends well in some situations, so make sure to watch until the end of this video to know what happens when you do. The gas cylinder and regulator were given to Jari by Patrick, who naturally knew this and was willing to spare them. Patrick watched helplessly in horror as his friend Jari died in front of him as he was swapping regulators when he started swallowing water and quickly drowned. After another 20 minutes of futile attempts, Patrick eventually gave in and admitted that he would have to complete the dive alone without being able to liberate Jari's body. Patrick understood that even a brief stay at that depth would delay his ascent, as the additional 20 minutes had increased the number of hours he needed for decompression to avoid resurfacing too soon and potentially catastrophic decompression sickness. Additionally, he had no way of getting in touch with the second set of divers about the occurrence and knew they would discover Jari's body obstructing the route. A few hours later as scheduled, the second group of men began their dive from Flora. They traveled through the tunnels and the lengthy air chamber and then plunged into the swamp. 
A man by the name of Vesa Rantanen was taking the lead. He came upon Jari's body as he started climbing the sump. He later recalled how a strange beeping sound had penetrated the total silence of the cave. His greatest fear came true as he got closer to Jari's body, since Jari's body was obstructing the narrow corridor and the beeping had come from his safety gear. Vesa decided to attempt to squeeze Jari's body because it would take considerably longer to turn back than to continue moving forward. A tear in his dry suit from the sharp cavern's rocks would undoubtedly kill him in those chilly depths, so he carefully pushed past the body. Jaro Uzumaki was behind Vesa, and when he saw the other Jari's body, he panicked and turned around. Uzumaki also became stuck near the bottom of the sump at a depth of 442 feet. Jari Uzumaki, like the other Jari, eventually perished near the bottom of the small sump. The final diver, Kai Kankanen, was also one of the first cavers to explore the cave system and had ties to Steinugel Flagget, tried to help, but was ultimately unsuccessful. Having decided to return the way they had come, Kai ultimately surfaced back at Plura after an 11-hour dive, though it had been so long since he had started the dive that he had to take a break through the refrozen ice from below. After eventually coming to the surface in the pool of Steinugel Flag at Dry Cave, Patrick Groinkvist and Vesa Rantanen also experienced decompression sickness, sometimes known as the bends, as a result of coming to the surface so soon after spending so much time at such depths. When the police were informed, they understood that if they had any hope of finding the bodies, they would need to hire experienced divers. A team of renowned divers from across the world was organized by the authorities to assist with the discovery of the dead after the cave was closed off to the general public. The body of Jari Huadarinen was discovered by international divers when they descended into Steinuga Flagget's dry cave. They made an effort to liberate it but realized there was no way to do it from that side. After considering the dangerously confined circumstances of the caves, the divers decided that even for experienced divers like themselves, recovering both bodies would just be too risky. After hearing this news, the remaining divers and their diving community friends were devastated and decided that, if the authorities and international divers would not retrieve their friends' bodies from the cave, they owed it to their friends to return and, if necessary, illegally retrieve the bodies. Admittedly, they did know the cave better than anyone else on the planet. After the Norwegian and British authorities postponed the official recovery operation because it is deemed too risky, the friends go on a secret mission to recover the bodies themselves. Four among their buddies chose to take the risk despite the official's warnings that recovering the men's bodies would be too dangerous. So, they plunged into the frigid dark water seven weeks later. They had to lug equipment to the dry caves at Plura and Steinugel Flagget, which was a complex task in and of itself. All the remaining divers were present as the two-day expedition to rescue the bodies got underway. Vesa managed the operation from the surface due to a spinal injury he sustained from his decompression sickness. At the same time, Kai assisted the crew by transporting the essential equipment between Plura and Steinugel Flagget's cave. Sami Pakarinen, the third member of the trio that had discovered the connecting pattern with Patrick and Kai, was one of the recovery divers as well. The operation was ultimately successful, but he nearly perished when the cave collapsed during it and he was nearly crushed by a large falling boulder that he recorded on camera. Even though the operation was illegal, none of the people involved were held accountable once they informed the police that they had found the bodies. Later, Patrick Grinkfeast's co-workers at the fire station where he works in nominated him to be awarded a first-class medal of the Finnish White Rose for his bravery. The cave system was made accessible to the public, and although both Jaris's bodies were eventually found, some of their equipment is still there in the sump, as a warning to anybody who would venture into its icy depths. We send out all our love for the divers' families, and may they rest in peace. How about you? How far would you go to save your friends? Leave a comment below about your experiences, give this video a thumbs up, Click the notification bell for more informative videos and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to appreciate time with your loved ones for you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Okay? Stay safe everyone.